Hi there, everyone. Welcome to this session of um, discussing the lessons in A Course in Miracles. I'll share screen so you can read along with what I've prepared beforehand. Um, this session will be recorded um, and we will be talking about lessons 267 through 273 of A Course in Miracles. And we will look at the seven lessons of the past week and the themes that um, are spread out through the second part of the workbook. Um, and these lessons and the themes form the starting point for our conversation. But let's start first with centering our minds. Allow your breath to settle in a comfortable pattern, gently inhaling and gently exhaling. Gently and quietly, in and out, in your own comfortable pace. Allow the thoughts that enter your mind to move past. Let them not alert your attention. Instead, direct your attention towards the empty receptive expanse that is your mind. Peace to our mind, let all our thoughts be still. Now let's focus on our presence together here in this space. We've come here in the name of Jesus who has promised that, that when two or more are gathered in his name, he will be there with them. And so we trust that Jesus is here with us. I'd like to open this session with the prayer that I've adopted, adapted from Workbook Lesson 266. Father, you gave us all your sons to be our saviors and our counselors in sight the bearers of your holy voice to us. In them are you reflected. And in them does Christ look back upon us from ourself. Let not your son forget your holy name. Let not your son forget his holy source. Let not your son forget his name is yours. This day, we enter into paradise, calling upon God's name and on our own, acknowledging ourself in each of us, united in the holy love of God. How many saviors God has given us. How can we lose the way to him when he has filled the world with those who point to him and given us the sight to look on them? Amen. All right. Now slowly come back to the space again. Open your eyes. Um, the supporting theme for lessons 261 to 70 is what is the body? And we looked at that last week. I've um, selected three paragraphs that I thought would be helpful to look at um, because they form the basis of uh, a four of the lessons that we will be looking at today because they're in the 60 70 range um do i have a volunteer to read paragraph one three and four i volunteer all righty the body is a fence the son of god imagines he has built to separate the parts of his self from other parts it is within this fence he thinks he lives to die as it decays and crumbles. For within this fence, he thinks that he is safe from love. Identifying with his safety, he regards himself as what his safety is. How else could he be certain he remains within the body, keeping love outside? The body is a dream 
Like other dreams, it sometimes seems to picture happiness, but can quite suddenly revert to fear, where every dream is born. For only love creates in truth, and truth can never fear. Made to be fearful, must the body serve the purpose given it. But we can change the purpose that the body will obey by changing what we think it is for. The body is the means by which God's son returns to sanity. Though it was made to fence him into hell without escape, yet has the goal of heaven been exchanged for the pursuit of hell. The son of God extends his hand to reach his brother and to help him walk along the road with him. Now is the body holy. Now it serves to heal the mind that it was made to kill. <clears throat> Does anyone have something to share about that? Just one thing, just Go one ahead. thing. And it was at the very last sentence. It just dawned on me <laughs> how simple this can be. Not easy, but simple. Now is the body holy. And how is that? Just extending the hand to reach our brother, to mm -hmm. help him walk along the road with him. That's what does it. Anyway. Yeah, you nailed it. You nailed it, Ardith. <laughs> Spot on. Oh, <laughs> no, I, I think you're right. It, it, it encapsulates the entire theme, the entire essay. Mm -hmm. And that's why we need our brothers, because if there weren't any brother, because sometimes people say, well, there's nobody here. It's all us. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't, I, I can't work like that. <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah, we need our brother, you know, for them to reach out to us and for us to reach out to them. And in that reaching out, that's where it happens. Yep. Yes. Well, you said it in your prayer, in the prayer, actually. It's a kind of like a mirror of it. Um, Jesus saying that when two or three are gathered. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, and in the next theme, we'll come upon it again, but we'll see that a little later. I'm going to scroll further down and we come to lesson 267. Unless there is a lesson that some of you, any of you would like to talk about first, then we'll go, we'll go and look at that lesson first. If there's one on your mind. Okay. So let's read lesson 267. Ardith, would you read for us? Okay, let me just pull it up here. Um, my heart is beating in the peace of God. Surrounding me is all the life that God created in his love. It calls to me in every heartbeat and in every breath, in every action and in every thought. Peace fills my heart and floods my body with the purpose of forgiveness. Now my mind is healed, and all I need to save the world is given me. Each heartbeat brings me peace. Each breath infuses me with strength. I am a messenger of God, directed by his voice, sustained by him in love, and held forever quiet and at peace within his loving arms. Each heartbeat calls his name, and everyone is answered by his voice, assuring me I am at home in him. Let me attend your answer, not my own. Father, my heart is beating in the peace the heart of love created. It is there and only there that I can be at home. Thank you. How lovely. It's an easy lesson to absorb. It, it's yeah. just, it's just uh, beautiful. Beautiful, very clear, huh? Yes. And do you do you all think that the first two lines are, that's literal? I I love I would love to think it's literal. Yeah. How yes. could it? Yes, 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 yes. How could yeah. it not be? How could it not yeah. be? Yeah. It, I, I, the word immersion came to mind. I don't know why, but yeah. whether it's a feeling or in so-called actuality, 
but it's it paints this picture that we would never come to ourselves ever yeah, yeah. <laughs> not really <laughs> Hmm. I, I love the part, I am a messenger of God, yeah. directed by his voice, sustained by him in love, and held forever quiet and at the peace within his loving arms. Ooh, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's something. Yeah. That's something, you're right. I wish everybody knew that. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we are... The messengers yeah. of God. <laughs> You're here to tell them that. You're perfect. You may not think yep. you are. You are. <laughs> yes. You too. Us yeah. too. All. One. <laughs> but to, go, to, go, to go back to those first lines, right? Um, how, does yes. that, how does that jive with knowing that we are a thought in the mind of God? We are highly abstract. And yet in, in, the, in those lines, I also hear an echo of the lesson, God is in everything I see. Right. Yes, that's that's it. Uh, so that's, we have that's to remember another, that. A court, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's another a paradox, right? Well, <laughs> I, I'm I'm trying to unparadox myself, but you could say that. Yes, definitely so. <laughs> but but um, what was it? Oh, I don't know. It went right out of my head. If it was that important, it would come back. So, um, <laughs> yeah. All right. I would say, um, I would jump in and just say, um, I've got to find it in the course here, but the difference between love and fear, love is abstract, fear is specific. Mm -hmm. The course says there has to, the fear is specific, there has to be an object of, the, of your fear, I think, I got to find it. But the idea that love is abstract, um, I don't think I can wrap my mind around that as an ego, as, as, as what I currently am, because everything I see is specific, but I don't know that God sees in specifics or knows in specifics. Um, I don't know why I brought that up, but I'm going to stop there because I don't know what that means, but that's all I got. To <laughs> <laughs> you, you, picked up one the, of those <laughs> you picked up on the word abstract. And then it occurred to you that the, the course says love is abstract and fear is specific. Fear has to do with with, with a form, right? And love, oh, perhaps okay. that helps. If you think love doesn't have, doesn't need a form, what, what form does love need? You feel it. Well, it and, it's, and there's no subject to object relationship. Exactly. Whereas with fear, there is there is that subject to object. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's it. I don't yeah. want to go any further with it. All righty. I, I just uh, I put in uh, the our online edition. I put in uh, fear is not real and came up with eight results. If somebody would like to do that for themselves, it's ah. it's interesting, <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> yeah, and, and yet when you feel it, it's very real. But yes, yeah, even so though that, it tells us it is not, but still, yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, but still, all right. Lesson two sixty eight. Um, Peter, would you read that, please? Lesson 268, let all things be exactly as they are. Let me not be your critic, Lord, today and judge against you. Let me not attempt to interfere with your creation and distort it into sickly forms. <clears throat> let me be willing to withdraw my wishes from its unity and thus to let it be as you created it. For thus will I be able to, to recognize myself as you created me. In love, I was created, and in love will I remain forever. What can frighten me when I let all things be exactly as they are? Let not our sight be blasphemous today nor let our ears attend to lying tongues. Only reality is free of pain. Only reality is free of loss. Only reality is wholly safe. And it, and it is only this we seek today. So for me, this is a reminder not to let the egos impressions, repressions, distortions, 
cloud my view of of you know, reality uh, or of what is. So let all things be exactly as they are. To me, says don't try to change the truth with the machinations of the ego. Mm -hmm. So you know, so so seeing fear as real instead of fear fear as illusion is a machination of the ego. Seeing my brother as my enemy rather than as myself is a distortion of the ego. Um, and Christ's vision is, is, is what we, we're seeking, what, we're, what I'm attempting to reach. That's, that's letting all things be exactly as they are. Yes. My, brother, my brother is the Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because the thing is, if you say let all things be exactly as they are, and you you do not come from that from that perspective of the Christ vision, then it doesn't make sense at all. It's sort of like you know you you just let it be. You just you know you you give up. You just let things as they are, and it is what it is. <laughs> where's my next cola? I mean, yeah. Uh, whereas if you if you come from the place of love, from from the vision of Christ, then you can say let all things be exactly as they are, because they, then you'll see that they're all loving. They're all expressing love. At least that's a, a how week I ago, yeah. A week ago when I read this in, in lesson, you know, it, it was fine. I had no problem with it. But today uh, it is a challenge for me because, well, well, my wife is feeling very sick. Two, two weeks ago she had surgery and she came home the next day and She's been recovering, but there's there's still p issues, and she's trying to call doctors and get appointments, and it, it's painful for me to watch. Mm. Uh, and my prayers don't seem to help that much, at least not on the physical level. And uh, she's not a course follower, she, but still, you know, when things are are going not the way you want it, it's it's hard to let things be exactly as they are sometimes exactly. and understand the lesson personally i my my inner peace isn't disturbed i know that you know i don't fear death i i i don't believe in death right I believe in change but uh it's when a loved one is suffering it's you know it's a challenge yes I feel for you yeah. and for Thank your you. wife. We all do. It's hard not to react as a human when we're in the human form. You know, that's a yeah. big challenge for us all, I think. And, and still, uh, there is a way to, to, to see the situation with the eyes of the Holy Spirit. There is, there is, there must be a way. That's the promise of the course. No matter what the life in the world throws at us, there is a way to see it with the eyes of, of love, the eyes of Jesus, the eyes of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I, I believe that our situations are always in our best interest for our spiritual development. Right, right. But still, it, it's painful. Yeah, yeah. In the next lesson in 269, it says, today I choose to see a world forgiven in which everyone shows me the face of Christ. You know, for me, that's the challenge. I'm, my heart goes out to you, Andrew, and to your, your wife and your family. And, and how do we forgive that? How do we forgive that apparent pain or injustice or illness or whatever it is, you know, and that's, that's the promise of the course, and that's the challenge of the course. You know, I have to choose to, to obtain that. I have to choose to see the world forgiven. I, I extend forgiveness. What is forgiveness? To forgive is to overlook or look past. To forgive is to take responsibility for what I'm seeing and understand that what I'm seeing is not real. It's a projection of my mind works great in concept, works, works great in theory, and then to have someone in your own home or your own family who's suffering, very hard to apply that, so I get it. 
Yeah. If we realize that we're getting the reflection of the egoic environment in the world that we're seated in, and we have trust that we try to open ourselves to that Christ vision, that little by little, now some people it may happen immediately, where their vision is switched, and they see the beautiful world, and they see beyond the pain. But for the rest of us, this is the egoic environment. But if we keep opening up, keep willingness, and don't stop, and know that anything that we see that reflects pain is not of God, then I think, well, for me, it helps. I went through a, a, seri- a situation uh, nine years ago when I lost my partner, and I spent a year and a half in and out of hospitals, in and out of treatments, uh, horrific to the ego events, but what kept me going throughout was just the consistency to look away from what the ego wanted to tell me I was seeing. I still went through the things, but I will say, if I hadn't done that, I would never have made it. So I, I really I give my love and understanding to what you're going through, but I think it, it, this is a process. Again, it's simple, but it isn't easy. But if we keep at it and remember what the end is, I think it helps, it will help ultimately. At least it did me. I hope it does you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel, I still feel the peace of God. I feel, like I said, I feel I don't believe in death and, and all. It's just that you, you kind of hope that your prayers would help someone else uh, alleviate their suffering and that just doesn't happen at least not yeah. but but andrew i mean you don't you can't know what her path is you can't know that that pain and that suffering that she's experiencing isn't something that is going to lead her to christ we just don't know any of that and all we can ever do i think is just to love love and and show up there to support and help in any way we can and, and trust in and, and uh, trust. the whole spirit yeah. Yeah. And, and of course actually promises that all of our loving thoughts are being kept and they're right. being, being kept till the moment that we ourselves or somebody else is is um, re- um reset what's the word <laughs> no re- can receive it oh when they're receptive that's the word i was looking for when they're receptive so that and the holy spirit knows exactly what that moment is so Mm -hmm. you've got like a whole bag of lovely healing thoughts this is waiting for her right Mm. thank you thank you you're welcome do you feel like going on andrew Shall we go to the next sure. one? Sure. Yeah, let's go to the next oh, one. We didn't read this one, 269, right? And then Peter touched upon it, but but we can right. go to 270. Um, uh, Sh- um, who hasn't read? Sharon hasn't read yet? No, I haven't read. W- would you like to? Yes. All right. <clears throat> Lesson 269. My sight goes oh. forth. Is that it? Yeah, go ahead. My sight goes forth to look upon Christ's face. <clears throat> I ask your blessing on my sight today. It is the means by which you have chosen to become the way to show me my mistakes and look beyond them. It has given me to find a new perception through the guide you gave to me and through his lessons to surpass perception and return to truth. I ask for the illusion which transcends all those I made. Today, I choose to see a world forgiven in which everyone shows me the face of Christ and teaches me that what I look upon belongs to me, that nothing is except your Holy Son. Today, our sight is blessed indeed. We share one vision as we look upon the face of him whose self is ours. We are one because of him who is the Son of God and him who is our own identity.
sentence one and two are really something. Yeah. My sight, so that's a, that's a, that's a physical sense, my sight, what you see. It is the means which you have chosen to become the way to show me my mistakes and look beyond them. Yeah, to look on what we saw and have a new perception of it. Exactly, the shift. Right. Yeah, this is the, the, the Kindle, right? The Kindle that, <laughs> that, that, that lights the fire that, that gives light to light my path. Okay, let's look at 270. Uh, Andrew, would you read? Sure. Thank you. I will not use the body's eyes today. Father, Christ's vision is your gift to me. And it has power to translate all that the body's eyes behold into the sight of a forgiven world. How glorious and gracious is this world. Yet how much more will I perceive in it than sight can give? The world forgiven signifies your son acknowledges his father, lets his dreams be brought to truth, and waits expectantly the one remaining instant more of time, which ends forever. As your memory returns to him. And now his will is one with yours. His function now is but your own, and every thought except your own is gone. The quiet of today will bless our hearts, and through them peace will come to everyone. Christ is our eyes today, and through his sight we offer healing to the world through him. The Holy Son whom God created whole, the Holy Son whom God created one. This is another feel good lesson. Sure is. And it's certainly not about the body's eyes. No. Translate all that the body's eyes behold into the sight of a forgiven world. Yeah. Why is it so hard to do, huh? Why to forgive, to, to, to just let everything go, just let it go, release it. Because it freaks you go out. Freaks the yeah. ego. We, are, we are attached to everything we see. Oh, we want. Look, Manu. Here. Manu. Hello. 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 <laughs> there he is. Oh, okay. Oh, you guys didn't Hello. see me all along. No, because, the, the sh because of the because of the share screen, I didn't see your uh, rectangle. Oh, I yeah, I was I was uh, uh, enjoying your lovely all of yours lovely presence. Uh, <laughs> the last 15 minutes <laughs> oh wow <laughs> it's good to see you well, we um, started late manu yeah. and so we're going to uh one or uh 12 15 instead of to 12. okay we picked up with you with our discussion manu of the tiny mad idea which took <laughs> up the first 15 minutes of the discussion so yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll share screen again uh, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. So this is yeah, this is a, another feel good lesson, right? Yeah. And now we come to yeah the supporting is... theme for next ten lessons to seventy one to eighty. What were you saying, Sharon? Yeah. What is the Christ? That's that's an exciting one. <laughs> that's an exciting Manu. Would you read, please? Sure, I'll be delighted. Um... Let me know how you want me to read the whole section, Johanna. Um, is that, yeah, for, for or how many paragraphs? Five, five. yeah, five paragraphs. Not okay. Yeah, go ahead. What is the Christ? Christ is God's son as he created him. He is the self we share, uniting us with one another and with God as well. He is the thought which still abides within the mind that is his source. Hmm. 
He has not left his holy home, nor lost the innocence in which he was created. He abides unchanged forever in the mind of God. Christ is the link that keeps you one with God and guarantees that separation is no more than an illusion of despair for hope forever will abide in him. Your mind is part of his and his of yours. He is the part in which God's answer lies, where all decisions are already made and dreams are over. He remains untouched by anything the body's eyes perceive. For though in him, his father placed the means for your salvation, yet does he remain the self who, like his father, knows no sin. It just makes me pause because there's so many capitalized um, <laughs> references huh. to him and self and his and father. It's just, you know, it just, it just asks for a pause. <clears throat> home of the Holy Spirit and at home in God alone. Does Christ remain at peace within the heaven of your holy mind? This is the only part of you that has reality in truth. The rest is dreams. Yet will these dreams be given unto Christ to fade before his glory and reveal your holy self, the Christ, to you at last. The Holy Spirit reaches from the Christ in you to all your dreams and bids them come to him to be translated into truth. We should come back to this one. He will exchange them for the final dream which God appointed as the end of dreams. For when forgiveness rests upon the world and peace has come to every son of God, what could there be to keep things separate? For what remains to see except Christ's face? And how long will this holy face be seen when it is but the symbol that the time for learning now is over and the goal of atonement has been reached at last? So therefore, let us seek to find Christ's face and look on nothing else. As we behold his glory, will we know we have no need of learning or perception or of time or anything except the Holy Self, the Christ whom God created as his son. Thank you, Manu. What did you look, want to look again, want to look at again? Uh, can we please see paragraph three or four? I forget now. It was the end of three. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about uh, your sharing, Andrew, and our... Um, our constant struggle, so to speak, to come to terms with what's happening because it's so hard. And yet, like all of the rest of you were sharing back with Andrew, you know, in solidarity and in trying to help us. Um, it made me think of that conversation. So it's it says here uh, in sentence two of paragraph three this is the only part of you that has reality in truth the rest is dreams and then yet will these dreams be given unto christ to fade before his glory and reveal your holy self the christ to you at last um there was a section here actually um yeah it was also in paragraph four to continue this thought about you know the fact that we are uh, a dreaming a nightmare right now. So the Holy Spirit reaches from the Christ in you to all your dreams. So the Holy Spirit is the, the bridge from the Christ. It enters our dreams because it knows how to really 
it it understands what we are going through and then he bids them to come to him to be translated into truth so as hard as it is for all of us we are we are asked as we have said before to offer the the nightmare that we are dreaming to the holy spirit so that he can help us reinterpret it he will exchange them for the final dream which would be the end of dreams so I, th those were the thoughts i had about mm -hmm. uh, what to do with all these very difficult situations thank you face of christ that that uh, i don't think that could be a literal meaning because christ as spirit has no form he's a thought of god as it says in the very first paragraph so we're supposed to try to see christ in each person that we encounter and everyone we see but it, it's not the literal face of jesus or i mean we're all christ it's it's uh I think it's the light. We have to look for the light in each person. If you look, if you look in people's eyes and you're bent on seeing the Christ in a person, you see their eyes twinkle all of a sudden. Mm. The yeah. light, yeah. 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 I it's like the that. Light. And uh, this also goes back, Johanna, to what you said. Uh, we can yeah. certainly look uh, more neutrally at everything, but then once we add that loving presence and we see from that perspective that presence then connects us all and yes. and then we are looking at the face of christ as especially when we see in into the eyes and look look just beyond them so to speak mm -hmm. because love makes it so yeah because yeah. that, that's the only tissue. That's the only thing that is reality. So as we become love, we are <laughs> automatically connected to the face of Christ. And, and then we are, as we look lovingly upon everyone and everything, then, then that's it. That's the holy experience. That's probably the holy instant as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Okay, let's share screen again. Christ's face. As a matter of fact, um, I forgot the person's name, but there was this lady who, um, who was saying that when she was in the presence of like a group that she was facilitating, I, I can't remember what it was exactly, but she was in her, in, like in a, in a room or in a hall with people. And all of a sudden they were transformed. She just saw like pillars of light instead of people mm -hmm. oh and so and so when when andrew said well you know it, it can't be literal christ's face but in her experience for that i mean it didn't last forever it was it was like an instant or, or or a couple seconds i suppose but then it was real i suppose so we we don't know what it will be like that's but we have to go by what we do know and offer that up I think the course the course talks about the great rays mm -hmm. as as what we see or experience when we have that holy instant or when we see the face of Christ in another. I'm not sure. I haven't had it, so I don't know exactly what you'd call it. But I don't. I, I'm not sure it's a representation of a face as opposed to the light that emanates yeah. from from the beingness of the person. And everything actually, if if you if you go by what, for instance, Eckhart Tolle in his um, in his book, The Power of Now, explains that, it, that he went through a period of, of several weeks actually, where where everything was glowing, he couldn't function mm -hmm. because everything was glowing and there was just nothing else to do than behold the glowing. <laughs> if I remember, <laughs> behold, I love that behold the glowing. It's the light, though. See, that's the thing. That's the thing. The face, the face is just a form. We know the content is what stays eternal. 
So yeah. the face is just a form, but I think it's it's used for our benefit. We know what yes. it means when we look at a face on a body. So it simply means this is how we identify it. And if it's light, if it's pillars of light, or if it's rays of light, or if it's a spurk of light, it really is only in an instant that we need it. And if it lasts longer than we're blessed, uh, we all have read about many, many individuals who've had these experiences and so, uh, to me, it's a cloud of many witnesses, and I listen to that, and I, I, I trust in it because I believe in my heart and feel it in my heart that that light is what keeps us all here going in, and, and ready for the last, the last meeting where God is not seen but only understood. That's, that's absolutely true, and to experience it, uh, what is the Bible? Jesus says, uh, no one has seen God at any time. So the only way we see God is, is the way we're, we're reading it in the course. And, and other, other systems, of course, as they, as they portray it. But anyway, I don't want to ramble anymore. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. it. Thank you. Uh, Manu? Mm-hmm. I want to build on what Ardith said and also Peter kind of mentioned. Like, you know, most of us haven't had that uh, quote-unquote experience of... Uh, seeing the rays of light or witnessing the light. And we've heard all the many other people speak to it or talk about it. In the in the previous lessons, it uh, talks about the fact that that's like, you know, the forgiven world is the final uh, perception, is the final illusion. And it's my, so speaking to what Ardith said, we should continue, obviously, in the faith that when the time is right, such an experience may come to us. And it's my belief that the longer we don't explicitly experience something like that, the more amazing and rewarding the ultimate experience will be. Oh. <laughs> I would also I would also mention... Uh, this back to Eckhart Tolle's experience, lesson 15. Uh, this is the beginning of real vision. So lesson 15, my thoughts are, was I have made. This Sorry, is the could, be- rep- could you repeat that? Because your voice uh, went away for a sec. So lesson 15, my thoughts are images I have made, paragraph mm-hmm. two. This is the beginning of real vision. You can be certain that real vision will come quickly or you will begin to understand it when you have seen little edges of light around the same familiar objects, which you see now. And uh, this is the beginning of real vision. So, so it's that the course talks about vision versus, you know, seeing with the body's eyes and, and a representation of that in the world of form is what Eckhart Tolle experienced, what we're talking about, which is the, it, some might call it an aura, it's the edge of light. Uh, as we go along, you, you may have many light episodes. They may take many different forms, some of them quite unexpected. Do not be afraid of them. They are signs that you are opening your eyes at last. They will not persist because they merely, repre- they, they merely symbolize true perception and they are not related to knowledge. So it's a phase we go through in our transition as we as we move along mm. this path. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, there's only like that one reference in the whole text to something like that. There's a couple more, but like explicitly tying perceptual eyesight with vision. And even there it says it's not true knowledge. It's not knowledge. It's just a and so, um, yeah, I was just thinking out loud. I was in my mind thinking that maybe it's contradicting the course, but it's, I don't think it's even a necessary step uh, because at the end of the day, you know, feeling the peace of God and the love is um, in my book proof enough. And so, you know, when the, uh, like I said, the ultimate experience comes, whether it starts with those glowing edges or just jumps into a raging fire of light, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It'll, it'll happen when it happens. 
and it will and it will be what exactly what what will be most helpful yeah that i know for sure and it doesn't necessarily have to be um as i'm feeling it right now it doesn't necessarily have to be a light because we're we're expecting, yep. for instance, think of, think of the 4th of July and the fireworks going on. There are lots of light up there. But that's what the physical, the physical eyes see. And, and so when those experiences that various individuals describe, they, to me, they're seeing what many see internally and whatever yeah. form it needs to take. And the feeling alone can be considered to be part of Christ's vision, Christ's sight, and seeing that light. Because I've seen that happen in watching faces of, of individuals, and there's no, I don't see any visible light, but I can see on their face because I feel it in my, in my innards. <laughs> that's, that's where I feel that light. And it may not be, as, as, as has been descri- described, as blazing, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter at all. We're all going to see it and feel it in whatever way is absolutely meant right and i'm just so grateful and i'm grateful for you all of you yeah i feel the light right now (laughs) sharon and then manu oh i don't have my hand up oh sorry i thought you wanted to add something Manu. yeah it's exactly artist it's we can feel and experience the light and Mm -hmm. the other thing that i got reminded of in in terms of a light quote-unquote light experience was um, for who might have tried it, I haven't, but there are many people who have tried plant medicine and uh, other substances, mm-hmm. right, which uh, mm-hmm. does, in some cases, accelerate or give you a foretaste of what that might also look like, because it's, mm-hmm. it stops the action of the ego and allows the, the true mind to show its face, uh, among other things. So mm-hmm. just had that thought as well. Yeah, there's actually a podcast with Judy, one of the last podcasts that Judy did with a gentleman who uh, goes into that subject. It's really interesting. Yeah, she got a lot of flack for that. Oh, she did? Yeah. And she she expected flack, which is why it was yeah. only published after her passing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of my favorites. <laughs> it was a very interesting conversation. Yeah, yeah. 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 If if a listener doesn't know what I'm talking about, it's uh, Miracle Voices, and you can find it um, if you go, if you Google Miracle Voices or you go okay. to miraclevoices.org, and you'll find yeah. various episodes. And I forgot the name of the gentleman, but it's one of the last that Judy Scutch did. Yeah. And the the man who was being interviewed, he spoke primarily about his experience with the chemical called uh, DMT five or five DMT. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, very interesting indeed. It was interesting listening to him talk, knowing that he was the man that that invented Vodafone, and back oh. back before, you know, way back in the beginning of computers. That's how you hook them up. Vodafone allowed people to charge things like over the airwaves, over the phone lines, and that was huge. And it was just oh. interesting to me to see someone from the secular world, you know, really technical, high up yeah. in the secular world, come to the course in such a beautiful, heartfelt way mm. as he expressed. It was beautiful. Mm. All right. Um, we still have a little time left. So we can go into lesson 271. Um, Peter, would you please read? I will. Uh, 271. Oh, it's a good one. Christ is the vision I will use today. Each day, each hour, every instant, I am choosing what I want to look upon, the sounds I want to hear, the witnesses to what I want to be the truth for me. Today, I choose to look upon what Christ would have me see, to listen to God's voice and seek the witnesses to what is true in God's creation. 
In Christ's sight, the world and God's creation meet. And as they come together, all perception disappears. His kindly sight redeems the world from death for nothing that he looks on but must live, remembering the Father and the Son, creator and creation unified. Father, Christ's vision is the way to you. What he beholds invites your memory to be restored to me. And this I choose to be what I would look upon today. Thank you. So again, I, this first sentence, just, you know, first two sentences jump out at me. Each hour, each day, each hour, every instant, I am choosing what I want to look upon. The sounds I want to hear. Mm. Witnesses to what I want to be the truth for me. So this whole, I'm responsible for everything I see. Everything I see. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There, and and it comes from that desire. There's a there's a there's a part of my mind, the the ego portion, that desires everything, each day, each hour, every instant, whatever I'm experiencing, as long as I'm plugged into the ego, at least, is what the ego desires. And you know that's why for me forgiveness is. A lot of forgiveness, when it says to overlook or look past, it's to not react to what I think I see, because when I react to it, I make it real. Yeah. So the, the opportunity slash challenge is to no longer react, at least to react alone, to ask the Holy Spirit, okay, how should yeah. I respond to this? What's the proper interpretation of this? Holy Spirit, how do you see this? Because I want to kill that guy because he just cut me off on the highway or whatever. <clears throat> Give me another way to see this. Thank you. Um, Sharon and Artie, Andrew, would, Andrew, would you like to? Andrew, oh, yeah. Andrew, sorry, I didn't see that. Andrew is first. Okay, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, th that uh, lesson sort of raised a question in my mind that I hadn't really occurred to me before, but uh, is where we are. Christ, all of us are Christ. We're all a part of Christ, a thought of Christ. Uh, who was it that first believed that they were separate from God? Was it Christ? I mean, Jesus is the one who sort of realized the way back, but, and in he's, in he's teaching us, but is it is it the Christ mind, uh, or is it just a creation of Christ that, that that just confuses me? It just confuses me. Mm -hmm. Does anyone want to address that, and then we can go to the other comments, Manu? In a manner of speaking, that's the ultimate question, Andrew, because we are all perplexed. In our egoic thinking, we are all perplexed as to how, first of all, how could this even happen? And if it did happen, who, what part of God, God thought like that? <laughs> and uh, some of the answers given by others is that don't bother because <laughs> it's an, you know, it's an egoic thought, which will not result in any satisfactory resolution. Yeah. And then... Peter and I were discussing this separately and we've all had these discussions on, you know, so there, you know, there's a few different stories on how this happened. We remembered not to laugh, which means there was some aspect of God that chose not to laugh and become serious about stuff and separated. And then there are other creation myths and explanations, which also explain how this could have happened. And then there's this whole aspect of, you know, God, in some ways, in some fashion, God is choosing to not know itself and then re-know itself. But it could be satisfying at one level, but it's not ultimately satisfying. Thank you. I, I want to jump in when Sharon is gone, because I, uh, go ahead, Sharon. Go ahead, I think... go ahead Peter. Yeah, probably oh, more. Peter, Sharon, Ardith. Okay. 
Oh, R is two. I'm sorry. All right, I'm I'm jumping ahead, but you specifically, Andrew's question was who who thought that thought, right? What was your was who mm -hmm. who was so okay, yes, let's... was Christ. All right, chapter 27, section eight, hero of the dream, uh, paragraph five. Into eternity we're, we're all as one. There crept a tiny mad idea at which the Son of God remembered not to laugh. Now here's the, in the next sentence it says, in his forgetting did the thought become a serious idea, but in his, the H is not capitalized. I don't know what that means. I just noticed it for the first time now. So the Son of God is capitalized. Uh, Manu was mentioning earlier, and I think others have noticed that there are specific instances where pronouns are capitalized and where they're not. All I could say is I just noticed here, in his forgetting, did the thought become a serious idea and his is not capitalized. But in the prior sentence, it says, at which the son of God capitalized, remember not to laugh. So, Because I, I personally, I think that's because before the tiny mad idea, seconds before the tiny mad idea, it it we were whole and we were the 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 big H, you know, we we were the capitalized unity. But when the tiny mad idea happened, and we personally, I think that's the big bang. Then we were split into a bazillion pieces inside that oneness, and that's how we got the little H. He. That's the way of looking at it. Because it's all it's all these little pieces. That's what I think. And the only reason I raised my hand is because when it talks about vision and all of that, I think it, it's important to me to remember that I see what I have projected first. And that projection makes my perception not the other way around. And it took me a while to really grok that that whatever I'm seeing, I projected there or I wouldn't be seeing it. And when I got that right, I feel like now when I see people, I don't care what they look like, their face is like Christ. It's like, did, I just feel like, oh, they have Jesus faces, you know? <laughs> I, it's important to me to remember that I, whatever I perceive is my own projection. Thank you. Ardith? Uh, yeah, I was just, uh, I turn, uh, excuse me, I rep refer people to chapter 21, section two, the responsibility for sight. I'm not going to, I'll spare everybody in reading it, time not allowing anyway, but it does say there very clearly, I am responsible for what I see, I choose the feelings I experience, and I decide upon the goal I would achieve and everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. Amen. Now, to, leave it just, to leave it just at that, <laughs> though, uh, many have, have, and that's what they throw the book against the wall over. Uh, I think reading the entire chapter and kind of meditating on it is really it's helped me every step of the way. And the last thing I'd like to say is I'm just going to read uh, a very short paragraph, again, from the clarification of terms, but I, I do it because I know that what happens in the clarification is it's lifted these ideas and simply made them, put them in one spot to help us be able to understand them better. And number four in the introduction reads as follows. The ego will demand many answers that this course does not give. It does not recognize as questions the mere form of a question to which an answer is impossible. The ego may ask, how did the impossible occur? To what did the impossible happen? And may ask this in many forms. Yet, there is no answer. Only an experience. Seek only this. And do not let theology delay you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good one, Art. Well, on that Thank note, you. we can wrap up this session for today. And I'll share screen again. And I would like to, um, if it's all right with you all, I would like to um, read a closing prayer. Yes. It's based on the closing paragraph of the, in the workbook epilogue. We will be told exactly what God wills for us each time there is a choice to make. 
and he will speak for God and for ourself, thus making sure that hell will claim us not, and that each choice we make brings heaven nearer to our reach. And so we walk with the Holy Spirit from this time on and turn to him for guidance and for peace and sure direction. Joy attends our way, for we go homeward to an open door which God has held unclosed to welcome us. In peace, we will continue in his way and trust all things to him. In confidence, we wait his answers and we ask his will in everything we do. He loves God's son as we would love him. And he teaches us how to behold him through his eyes and love him as he does. We do not walk alone. God's angels hover near and all about. His love surrounds us. And of this, we are sure that Jesus will never leave us comfortless. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much for being here. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.